It's a big week for horror in comics this week, so let's get right to it. Here's what's new on the racks in the genre of horror this week, May 25th, 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comic Book Horror, May 25th, 2022. Dreadful Dreamscapes, number one, is from American Mythology. The stories are by Anne Toole, Danita Parrish, and Noelle Kuhurik. Here's another anthology series, this one done by three female writers, who offer up three new tales about spooky things that happen when the moon is full. I always love me a horror anthology, and the cover is interesting, so this one might be worth a peek. Horror Comics number 14 is from Antarctic Press. The story is by Marcello Bondi, with art by Brian Denham. Here's another issue filled with multiple horrors from Italian writer Marcello Bondi. I don't know much more about this comic, but the cover seems to promise some kind of Black Widow spider-looking creature who looks pretty gnarly. Still, this series has me befuddled. The site I get my new comic list from, League of Comic Geeks, lists Horror Comics 16 coming out this week. But then next week, it has issue number 10 and 11 coming out. I have no idea what's right or wrong, but is it too much to ask to have this series come out in order? Disturbed Dark Messiah number 1 is from Opus Comics. The story is by Tim Seeley, with art by Angel Hernandez. I'm not necessarily a Disturbed fan, but there's always been a connection with horror that I respected about them. The band came up with the concept of a man out of time against a world with no free will, privacy, or emotion. I'm all for a new horror hero, and horror vet Tim Seeley is there to make sure the story holds up. Love that cover and metal and horror often go hand in hand, so this one might be good. Monster Men, Isle of Terror, number two, is from American Mythology. This story is by Mike Wolfer, with art by Roy Allen Martinez. Horror writer Mike Wolfer continues where the adaptation of Edgar Rice Burroughs' classic story left off, with creatures born from mad science and dark desires. I love Roy Allen Martinez's Bernie Wrightson-esque monsters and really enjoyed the first issue of this series, so bring this one on. Willie's Wonderland prequel, number four, is from American Mythology. The story is by James Gohorik and S.A. Check, with art by Puis Calzada. Now possessing the mechanical bodies of a Chuck E. Cheese-like restaurant attraction, the souls of five killers go on a murderous rampage across a small Midwestern town. If you love the movie with Nick Cage, you're going to want to check out how it all began in this series. Rise of Dracula, number six, is from Source Point Press. The story is by Rich Davis, with art by Puiz Calzada. No description to this issue is provided, but if the cover and title is any indication, it involves Dracula, and he rises from something, and there's a woman on the cover who will be amazed by it all. I'm sure that'll get copies of this book in the hands of readers. The Rush, number six, is from Vault Comics. The story is by Simon Spurrier, with art by Nathan Gooden. This looks to be the last issue, as our hero mother finally finds out the fate of her lost son, and that means a stroll through a cursed valley. More Western horror to come in this beautifully written and drawn series. Lady Death. Sacrificial Annihilation number one is from Coffin Comics. The story is by Brian Polito and Mike McLean, with art by Diego Bernard. Only booby hell goddess Lady Death stands in the way between Earth and an army of evil. In this, the first issue of Deathocalypse, a year-long event from Coffin Comics and the man who created this indie sensation, Brian Polito. Be assured, these covers will be fueled with bodacious ass and titties. Philadelphia, number 22, is from Image Comics. The story is by Rodney Barnes, with art by Jason Sean Alexander. 
The King of Vampires takes on a pack of werewolves in the middle of Philly as this history reimagining horror series continues. Now, given that cover, one might think I would haul out my ass and titties jingle. But this one is tastefully shaded and full of dreadful moods from artist Jason Sean Alexander. So no music this time. The last book you'll ever read, number eight, is from Vault Comics. The story is by Colin Bunn, with art by Layla Leitz. The apocalyptic writer and her bodyguard make their last stop on their tour across the country facing the end of the world. This looks to be the last issue of this series, and I'm sure Bunn and Leitz are going to go out with a bang. Bloodstained Teeth, number two, is from Image Comics. The story is by Christian Ward, with art by Patrick Reynolds. This series focuses on a vampire for hire as he breaks the vampire code and turns anyone with enough money into vampires. But the vampire mob won't stand for that and sends a vamp cage fighter to take him out. Toothy Fun is bound to be coming from this new series. Elvira in Horrorland, number one, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by David Avalone, with art by Silvia Califano. An all-new Elvira series begins with our Mistress of the Macabre stumbling into a multiverse made from different horror movies. See Elvira in some of your favorite horror films in this sequel to Elvira Meets Vincent Price. And since this is Dynamite, expect some covers with Ass, ass, titties, titties, ass, and titties. It's more like ass and cleavage, but you know what I mean. DC vs. Vampires, Hunters No. 1, is from DC Comics. The story is by Matt Rosenberg, with art by Neil Googe. With the DC Universe succumbing to the vampire plague, now it's time for Damian Wayne to enter the fray in this blood-soaked one-shot tying into the hit series. Zombies vs. Robots Classic No. 3 is from Image Comics. The story is by Chris Rial, with art by Ashley Wood. After the world has been decimated by nuclear war, and all that is left are zombies and robots, a new force emerges. Amazons. And amidst this all-out war is a pretty cool zombie minotaur. Sounds pretty freaking awesome to me, as this image series reprints the award-winning classic comic series, first published by IDW. Stillwater, number 13, is from Skybound Comics. The story is by Chip Zdarsky, with art by Ramon Perez. This series is about a town where no one dies, and looks into concepts of mortality and morality through the eyes of a person born in the mystical town, but left at an early age, only to return and become swept up in the local politics and intrigue. It's small-town horror and mayhem from uber-hot writer Chip Zdarsky. Spectro, number one, is from Aftershock Comics. The story and art are by Juan Doe. Creative powerhouse Juan Doe provides a one-shot featuring some of his most twisted tales. One about sentient technology, one about alien excommunication, another about Martian mountain climbing, and the last one about space station suspense. It's a mad mix of sci-fi horror and psychedelica that shouldn't be missed. Task Force Z, number 8, is from DC Comics. The story is by Matt Rosenberg, with art by Vincente Cifuentes, Jackson Herbert, and Jesus Marino. It's Batman's villains on the Suicide Squad assigned to kill a bunch of heroes and villains infected with a zombie virus. How can you say no to this ultraviolent Elseworlds-esque series from my buddy Matt Rosenberg? Department of Truth, number 18, is from Image Comics. The story is by James Tiny IV, with art by Martin Simons. This issue starts a new arc as the department picks up the pieces after their dramatic encounter with their Russian counterparts, the Ministry of Lies. It's secret organization versus secret organization in this hit conspiracy series. The Swamp Thing, number 13, is from DC Comics. The story is by Ram V, with art by Mike Perkins. The Swamp Thing is back in the land of the living, but so is an old foe. But this time, there's a new Parliament of Trees. Not sure if George Clinton is a member of this parliament, but he should be. Either way, Ram V is bringing his all to this acclaimed horror series. Ice Cream Man, number 30, is from Image Comics. The story is by W. Maxwell Prince, with art by Martin Morazzo. This is one of my favorite anthology series, as it takes the reader into a myriad of subjects, and all of them prove to be brilliant and macabre. This one delves into the concept of always being the test subject for something in this world. It's vague, and the rat in the maze cover is chilling, so I'm sure this issue is going to be a good one to delve into. 
Something is Killing the Children, number 23, is from Boom Studios. The story is by James Tiny IV, with art by Werther Deladera. Well, Erica is in jail again, and she used her one phone call to contact someone from her past who followers of this series will most likely know. All that and a new monster arises in this, one of Tinian's best comics going on. Any of these new comics interest you? There's a whole hell of a lot of them. I'll definitely be checking out Ice Cream Man, Something is Killing the Children, Spectro, Maybe Disturbed Dark Messiah, Monster Men, Isle of Terror, and The Rush. How's about you? Let me know which ones you're looking forward to reading down in the comments. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality You're